All right. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. I'd like to call this meeting of the Park Advisory Board to order. Uh, let's begin with roll call. Okay, Janelle Brandon. Did not hear. Uh, Janelle. President, I'm present. Heidi, thank you. Heidi Duran. James Hand. Present. Sebastian McDougall. Here. Gia Rastier. Here. Valerie Ritland. Present. Lindsay Schoenack. Present. And Larry Selgevold. Here. Okay, um, just a few things. If you are looking to um, make a motion or second the motion, please say um, yes and then um, follow it up with your name so for my minutes I can know who is making the motion. Um, if you're looking to make a comment or ask a question during a presentation, um, you can use the chat option provided for you. Just let me know that you have a question or a comment, and uh, once that's opened up, I can let them know. And then, above all, if you are not speaking, please remember to mute. And I will hand it back to James. All right. Thank you, Randy. Uh, so item number two, recognitions, presentations, and introductions. Uh, I'd like to welcome our new board member, Valerie Ritland. Uh, thank you for joining us. We look forward to your participation on the board and, and uh, we're just excited to have you. Thank you. I hope I can contribute in some way and I've been impressed with everything I've read and seen so far. Excellent. Thank you. Uh, item number three, uh, approve the meeting minutes. I assume everyone had a chance to review last meeting's minutes. If I could uh, get a motion. Uh, Sebastian McDougal uh, makes a motion to approve the minutes. Lindsay Shonak, I second. We have a motion and a second. I don't believe there's any discussion on, uh, maybe there would be any discussion on meeting minutes. Hearing none, we'll move on to a vote. All those approved signify by saying aye. 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 All, all opposed? Motion passes. Uh, item number four, citizens addressing the board. We did receive a submission online uh, that I will read. It's from Nathan Heinrich. It reads, good day. I'm writing to discuss my disappointment with the management of the Meadows Golf Course. Since Corey Herlickson left to take on a new position at a private country club, I, along with many others in the Wednesday Men's League, have watched the league dwindle down in participation as well as the overall management of the golf course with the league and the loss of opportunities to showcase the course. While COVID-19 has been a challenge to many golf courses in this area, the participation, or excuse me, participation and revenues are likely to be high levels as it's a safe activity to do. I will say, if you're only looking at the revenue, you aren't seeing the whole picture. The Meadows has likely one of the nicest golf clubhouses in the metro area as far as a facility. The management on the golf course is at or near the bottom among the area courses. I've participated in the Wednesday Men's League for multiple years and have watched teams leave because of how it's been mismanaged. This year, there are only five teams participating due to lack of communication and lack of effort in trying to work with, with the normal we are experiencing with COVID-19. Last year, there were 14 teams. While this league has a board, in quotes, the golf shop has essentially taken over operations of this league for the past couple of years. I have a passion for golf and to go to other courses in town and see a full golf shop as well as golf professionals who make the effort to meet their membership, especially their leagues as they are the core of their golf membership. It's sad to see the Meadows doesn't have the full-fledged PGA professional as well. Today, they have a golf manager who hides from leagues and league players. Additionally, the course conditions that are at Meadows versus Village Green are completely different. Why can't they be the same? The Meadows had a lot of winter kill with their fairways. Uh, why is why is it they did, but but yet Village Green did not? Why are the greens not the same speed at Meadows versus Village Green? 
I know many people that compliment the conditions at Village Green, which among my golf friends is the best public course in town condition wise, but yet scoff at the conditions at the Meadows. I appreciate you listening to my concerns. I hope to see our fine city make required changes as this is the amenity that I use the most. There is opportunity that is being missed with the new leadership at the course. It can become a crown jewel. Thank you for your time, Nate Heinrich, Moorhead. And I will add that since this has been submitted, uh, there have been a couple emails exchanged uh, from Holly uh, and Nate, and I have had a conversation with Nate, and we intend to set up some sort of meeting with uh, with Nate and uh, any other league members or concerned uh, citizens who'd like to attend with the uh, Meadows management. Um, Holly, I don't know if you have anything to add to that or any thoughts. No, clear, clearly I think we need to have a sit down um, for a lot of this. This is the first we've heard from Nate. Um, at one time previously, I heard some food and beverage um, complaints from Nate, but in regards to direct contact with the golf um, staff, uh, this would be the first um, that we've uh, heard some of these things from, from Nate. So we're happy to sit down with him. Um, there are some changes. Um, you know, during COVID, there was a late start on leagues and um, this particular league. I think we can come to some kind of agreement for that works well for both groups. Um, so I think we just get a committee together um, and I think we uh, report back. Holly that and sounds, James, yeah, um, since it's in Ward 2, would you mind if I participate in that as well? Actually, that would be great. Um, I know Sebastian worked with us on a village green mm -hmm. issue with a person and his, that's in his ward. So um, we're happy to invite you, Lindsay, to that meeting. Thank you. Any other comments from the board? I would also add that I have heard really good things about the food and beverage um, with the new vendors. So. That's that's a plus for the courses. Um, if nothing else, we'll move on to agenda amendments. I don't believe we have any. Not hearing any, we'll go to item number six, update on the Parks Department COVID-19 effects. Okay, basically this is somewhat of a long memo as you can see um, it talks about um, basically the differences that have been happening during COVID. We've updated the park board on two previous occasions with what is happening in regards to uh, cancellations and updates. Uh, this would be the third time that, um, and publicly we would ha um, have an update. So basically we are following the governor's recommendations in all manner. Um, in regards to field sizes and different things as we go along. As you know, we closed the playgrounds down initially, but those reopened. Um, our special events have been all but canceled. We're trying to do things virtually. I think you guys have heard we're trying to do the Greater Moorhead Days Parade by having different submissions virtually. Canceled things like Celtic, our river arts couldn't happen. Uh, the governor's order is to not have more than 250 people at any one event. Um, we averaged between four and 500 people at River Arts events, so those weren't um, able to happen. Um, the one, the Moorhead Senior Center is really an interesting um, one in that I do not have any idea when that would be able to be reopened. Um, we are really going day to day and looking at the virus. Um, other senior centers in town are also not open. Um, the golf course is one that we were allowed to open sooner. We did not allow shotgun starts and there was 14 minutes in between tee times, which are some of the reason why um, in Nate's email, he talked about a lack of teams this year. Um, we had 14 prior last year that were in that league and now it went down to six. Um, it isn't just our requirements. There's a lot of people who do not feel comfortable getting in some of those groups. 
and we did not allow shotgun starts to begin with. Um, our food and beverage staff have really done what they can to um, do bag lunches and get things out onto the course. Um, they could follow the restaurant guidelines, but they feel like it is so few people inside that we've really just tried to make do with getting things out onto the course. Um, aquatics was our toughest decision. As all of you know, we gathered each of you and uh, made a decision not to open our outdoor pool. With swimming lessons, we felt the touch was just too... Um, it was just too hard to distance. There were a lot of parents of the lifeguards who called us saying that they did not want um, staffing was an issue and that we couldn't um, retain enough staff. We have that same question again in regards to aquatics. Um, I've been wanting the school to tell us whether we could do the lifeguard lessons inside their indoor pool. I think the risks are equally great now that we're moving indoors. And so I heard from the school the other day that the only outside folks they're allowing in their buildings is the YWCA who is under contract with them to provide their after school programming. So I, um, we don't have a total confirmation from the school as of yet, but I do not believe swimming lessons um, is gonna be allowed to be run in that indoor pool at the high school. Um, we continued on with a lot of the others. It just gives the summary on the, on the programs we did run and the sports associations. Um, all of them started late, but they um, most of them were able to go. We do have soccer starting. Um, soccer will be starting at the, um, our complex down south this year because FM Athletics football did make a determine not to go. Um, um, the Yumcom Center, although we're open, we are not open for large meetings. We're socially distanced um, and have set up rooms that can hold, hold 10 to 15 people at a time. Um, we're looking to make some changes at the Yumcom Center that they talked about at the um, City Council to maybe set up chambers there since we can control crowds and it, we don't have to use the elevators. So we're trying to get the Yumcom Center back um, into some sort of use. The museum itself is open. They're open um, from noon until five um, and Saturdays from nine to five. So that is something that folks can do mass required as with all of it. Mord Youth Hockey did hold a large tournament last weekend. Um, there was 166 teams in town from all over the nation. Um, they were to have their restrictions and we do, um, and Mord Youth Hockey did hold a lot of the teams at their facility. The Moorhead Sports Center, the schools, um, we. We manage that facilities from the schools. Um, about a week out, they did decide that spectators could come in to the arena, but at that point, the schedules were already out. So um, the Moorhead Sports Center did not hold any of those teams that were in town. Um, pretty much as far as virtual programming, we're looking to hold a lot of our upcoming things at Lutheran Church of the Good Shepherd. We have our basketball and so forth. They have the Community Life Center there that has allowed us to have groups there. And since um, we did help them fit that up, we have prepaid rent there. It's a it's an unusual relationship, but we have prepaid for space there. So we do have a number one priority. So some of, as we cannot take basketball into Ellen Hopkins, those locations will be moving a lot of them to the church so we can have with abbreviated um, participant size. Um, capital projects, that's mostly in Steve's. Um, presentation, so I won't go into that. But Val, I think you did have a question on, I saw it briefly, on what would the impact of not having um, aquatics be? Was that the question? Let's see. Impact of closing the pools had on the budget. Um, that was your question. The um, impact on the budget is unheard of at this time. Typically, we lose about $125,000 a year on our pools. So we can tell you we definitely saved that money. We, uh, the other is more revenue-based. So I can 
the end of the year will give us a much better picture of the overall financials, but I can tell you that that was a savings. So are there other questions about the COVID effects? Okay, so James, see none. Yeah, so let's move on to item seven, the 2021 program fees. And, and Holly, are you presenting this? I am. Um, every yeah. year we put together a list, that um, colored copy, which um, I don't think, I guess the item I put up was just the agenda, but the colored copy gives an idea of what those fees are. Do you guys have it on your packet or should we try to bring that content up? I know I have it in our packet, I assume. Okay. Everyone Holly, else you can also share it on your screen. Okay. So what I shared there, I need to grab, I think this file. Let me see if I can take a minute to um, I'm not very good at this so I worry that I'm gonna not be able to it's still thinking because probably because I didn't close the other one I still just have the agenda up. Randy, if I give you control, are you able to share? Or Steve, can you share the other packet? Yeah, let me get it. You want me to pull my slides up? Um, I actually, sure. do, you, do you have the fee schedule? Can you pull that up? Uh, I, uh, it's, it's in the me... packet. Mine just seems to be pulling up the agenda. Oh, I got you. Let me see what I can do here. No, oh, wait. I don't have the packet. I don't have the packet. Okay. It, well, I was just going to say, I think everyone, um, we all got the packet. We, sh we you know, should have, uh, okay. hopefully everyone got a chance to review it. I would say if anyone has any questions on it or concerns or, or if they didn't get a chance to see it and they, they uh, uh, want to discuss it, I guess now would kind of be your opportunity. So basically, I can give you an overview. We really were conscious of the fact that there was, with COVID, there's going to be a lot of impact, financial impact on families. So we tried not to raise anything too significantly, but there were areas that we did raise that we were off as compared to our neighbors in Fargo and West Fargo, and those we made um, impacts on. The other areas that were raised were multi-year contracts with the youth sports teams that had an increase written into those contracts annually. So those are already basically approved with the contract, but um, it, it's nice to see them in the document. Skating lessons was brought up to be with the regional, and then there were increases that you saw in the golf courses that were increases to passes because we hadn't raised those for a couple years. Um, and so golf courses really probably saw the most increases, the sports center, the ice show tickets and so forth. Again, um, Fargo was charging seven, we were charging five. So some of those we thought we could absorb just to, get, to stay in line with our neighbors. Um, there were a lot of um, advertising fees and so forth on here that are new to be seen. Um, by this group, that's a requirement that previous city manager Chris Volkers had to make sure that even our um, Dasher board fees and so forth um, were included on all of our pub public documents as fees that we charge. Um, in your communication, we identify a number of things that are free and open to the public. The, um, typically the waiting pools are there, the open gyms, um, there's a Romkey program and so forth. So there's a number of programs. If you cannot um, afford to pay that you can participate in. The last comment I'll make is that we still have money in our um, uh, scholarship 
area so that every student who really would want to participate in our programs could. Um, we've also put the scholarship program in as a don donation item. And we don't think with the lack of programming this year, we're gonna use all of that. So there'll be money next year for those donations that we've received from the Lions Club and uh, from a few private individuals. So um, there is scholarship money available. So, um, sorry, I wasn't very good at sharing the document, but if you have any questions, please let me know. I'm happy to answer them. Otherwise we would need a motion to approve them. Can someone make a motion, please? I move to approve the fees as presented. This is Valerie. I second. Is there any discussion? That was Gia that seconded okay. it. Thank you. No problem. Uh, any discussion? Hearing none, we'll move on to a vote. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed? Motion passes. Move on to item eight, an update on park maintenance projects. Okay, thank you. I'm going to try to share content, so bear with me. Let's see how this goes. Okay, does everybody see slides? Yes. Yes. Sweet. Okay, now let me uh, do one thing here. Almost there. And then I'm dealing with three screens here. It's a little overwhelming. So I got to switch one and then it should be swapped. And that should be, do you see a presentation or no? Or is it still the same slides with the. No. It's just the slides. Okay, I'm going to probably have to just press on with that because it's uh, outside of my. Three screens is uh, wait is two more than I can deal with. So all right. So rather than hold everybody up, um, thanks for the opportunity to give an update. We're pretty excited. Mike and his crews have been working really hard this summer, getting a lot of things done. So I'm gonna. There's a lot of slides here, but I'm gonna brief by exception and just a disclaimer. I did make a few updates because I wanted to add a few things in that were not in my previous version. So what I'll do is I'll. Uh, take this version of the slides, make a PDF out of it, and have Holly send it out to you guys so you have the latest version. But it's more for your reference to see what's going on, and I will be, be I will be brief by exception, so I won't be going through all these slides detail by detail. But I would like to say if anybody has any questions on any particular items that I'm not briefing on, please feel free to ask any questions. And I also uh, would like to uh, solicit any input um, on anything that you don't see that we have planned that you would want us to consider to plan. So we really value your input. So if we would like that during the briefing. So um, really we're, uh, this is all, my briefing relates to the strategic plan. So this is all in support of our infrastructure and goal five to support our parks and public spaces. Um, and so, and underneath that are the specific tasks that we track in our operational plan that support the strategic plan. Um, I won't go into much detail on that unless anybody has any questions and I'll get into the meat of the briefing. Um, this task is to execute capital improvement projects. The ones that I'm highlight that are highlighted, I will talk about a little bit later in the briefing, but these are all the capital improvement funded items we have uh, in the queue right now. We've finished some. Three of those that are highlighted are complete, and one of them is a pretty big one in our strategic plan, and I'll talk about that a little later. Uh, the golf course improvement, we are still waiting, uh, much to our chagrin, for the prefab building to be delivered by the contractor. It's been a high-vis project for a couple of years. Our request to build a bathroom on the 14th um, hole at Village Green. I just sent an email to the 
owner of the company uh, asking him uh, if I have to uh, look for other options if we can't get this thing done. So we'll see what that accomplishes as far as moving the schedule along. It was supposed to be done, delivered at the end of June and we're still waiting. Um, some park dedication funds. We fully expended our donation of 28,000 or dedication funds from the Stonecrest Belsley Apartments uh, area uh, development of $28,000. And we use that uh, to put towards a new playground in Queens. If you haven't seen that, I got some pictures of the before and the after. And then we've also done some work uh, to install a basketball court at Village Green 6th and plant some trees. Um, Queens Park Playground, that was uh, one of our oldest and most beat up playgrounds. So we basically pull all the equipment out except for the swing set because that's still, you know, it's one of those old ones that I used when I was a kid, you know, decades ago. But we, used, we, we had it on asphalt. I don't know what all this wood chip stuff is about. So that's just, I'm just joking. But it was truly mine was on asphalt. Um, so our new playground is, is uh, really nice. We reduced the footprint um just for so we wouldn't have to spend as much money on wood chips it was really too big of an area for the equipment that was out there so that'll save us some money long term on maintenance but i've been over there taking pictures and uh, i've asked some of the residents and they're really pleased with the new playground village green six that's uh recently poured basketball court and then forestry has also planted some trees around the playground it's a if you haven't been out there it's a huge area uh, lots of grass uh, and we just got to get some trees growing so uh, good uh, kudos to my forestry uh, my new forester who arrived started working with us last year came from fargo park so he's really kind of trying to work in park plans for tree planting in addition to the boulevard trees we plant as well as the new subdivisions uh, just finishing up a project in Centennial. Uh, a couple of, we, we've had to do this project for a couple of years, and um, we we're down to about 50% of the lights working at the softball fields and uh, baseball fields to the north of Highway or uh, 15th Avenue. And those are all done. We replaced about 230 lamps, and we used CI money as well as uh, some park amenities money to get this project done. And then the next is, is some listing of some capital projects, and it's mostly facility related. Uh, two that I'd like to talk about are uh, municipal pool projects. The first one is uh, we had some rodent issues chewing through the insulation on the old. That's a picture of the old water heater tank. We've since replaced it, the, the old water heater with a new water heater high efficiency that doesn't require a storage tank. But uh, we abandoned that storage tank in place and it had insulation that was encapsulated, but it contained asbestos. Then we had some rodents chew through it. So uh, we decided to abate the asbestos rather than have to deal with it and put any employees at risk, uh, specifically my pool guy, Scott Karski. So that was done and cleaned up. So that look, is looking good. And then um, we repaint. Two years ago, we redid the floors in the pool house. And this year uh, we did repainted the walls as well as uh, some of the ceiling that was peeling. And so the pool house as old as it is. If you walk in there, it looks uh, it's got a pretty good facelift. So we'll be ready for next season. Uh, this year, closing the pools gave us some opportunity to focus on some additional maintenance activities uh, in the pools. And there's a few more items that I, I don't uh, plan on talking about unless anybody again has any questions on any of these items. The next uh, thing I'll talk about are community uh, capital improvement program. And this is part of the strategic plan where the city council and the city staff developed uh, five top priorities to focus on. And those are listed here. And I'm going to provide an update on uh, priority one, which is a river corridor and the trail, and priority four, our south side dog park. Uh, these are pictures. If you haven't been down by Gooseberry and south of Gooseberry, the Blue Goose Trail is going in. Uh, that's being a, a project being managed by engineering, not public works, uh, but and planned by Christy and planning and executed by uh, the engineers and maintained by us. So. 
this provides another critical link uh, to our river corridor trail. It's going to be a nice addition to that. And just a couple other pictures. These were taken uh, a couple weeks ago, so I'm sure it's progressed much farther than this by now. That's actually that's a, that, that's what I thought because once I get rolling on the concrete, it doesn't take long to do that. So we should have that open uh, very very soon. And uh, yes, very exciting, very exciting. And then uh, speaking of trails, uh, you know, the downtown trail and the Homestead Trail that was finished last year, we, uh, Mike's guys, uh, and did some work and all, all the amenities are, are done along those new trails and the trail signage there. And then the signboards, Christy in, in planning and Forrest, our, our parks planner, um, have the maps done that are going to go in the message boards so those those will be put in very soon. We're very happy with the material we bought as far as the benches and trash cans. We they're 95% recycled material, and uh, this stuff will last forever and is very low maintenance. So pretty much the only thing will be left are these these items: cockroaches and Twinkies. If we have a nuclear war, um, there's a picture of the recycling and trash cans and the benches. Those benches are set on concrete with stamped poems uh, from those stamps that were used on Center Avenue and Main Avenue in, uh, in downtown Moorhead. And it's really a nice uh, touch. And I, I include the one from Christy Lyshevsky there along the Homestead Trail just uh, to give her some props. Uh, and now the uh, exciting, really exciting one is, yes, Southside Dog Park. Um, I'd like to just thank the team in planning Robin, Kim, Christy, Holly and Parks and Rec, Mike and my department uh, for planning this thing out. All the, the help and the support from the park board and the city council to get this project going. Um, this has been, uh, Holly could say how long we've been talking about the Southside Dog Park, but here it is. Um, it is open, it's soft opening, and then we're having the grand opening on the 14th of September. I'll be out there with my rescue and maybe the foster dog we have if we keep her but that's you know uh, that's still open for debate um, the only thing left is trees that we'll plant as part of our forestry pro or our forestry department will plant those trees in 2021 a uh, couple of pictures it's if you haven't been out there yet it's it's huge uh and it's going to be great small dog park area large dog park area it's ada accessible this is super exciting we, we uh, made sure that um, we, it was wheelchair accessible. And um, so we used plenty of concrete to make sure that folks in a wheelchair could bring their dogs and park, uh, you know, park their wheelchair and sit there while their dog is allowed to run around if they wanted to. Uh, so it's ready to go. Very exciting. It's finally here. Um, yeah. It's good. And we also have some amenities that we bought, those little uh, obstacles uh, that we bought with park amenities just to kind of get it started. We're still soliciting donations for some additional. There's so many cool things uh, to put in a dog park. Um, and we're hoping that some folks will find some and uh, and donate those. But we do have four of them or those three are the ones that we purchased. So. And then the last. Uh, part of the strategic and operational plan is, you know, keeping up, spending our park amenities budget. As you know, we get $250,000 a year for park amenities out of the capital budget uh, to improve existing park uh, items like replacing playgrounds and those things. And so I just like to, uh, we have a spend plan. We still have a little, we fully expended the 2018 budget. And here's a few things that we spent that on um, uh, and I'll talk about a couple of those. One's really super exciting and very highly used. Uh, first one is my guys noticed a need that that we needed to add some concrete and this is the ped bridge at Memorial Park and, and Oak Grove and from it was going to be very difficult to maintain so we added concrete uh, to the landing there and that lower if you see the center photo in the lower right hand 
And then in the lower right hand photo, that's a bike repair station, our third one in Moorhead, and that was donated by Affinity Bank. And uh, so that was great. And then uh, the picture to the upper left is additional concrete that uh, will make it when people come flying off the bridge uh, into Moorhead, it, there wasn't enough turning radius for the bikes to stay on the concrete. So we added that concrete there. That was brought up by a, a concerned citizen and it was a really good idea. Uh, so we, we made that addition to the concrete. And then here it is, the new pickleball courts in Horizon. So what we did, uh, Mike came up with a great plan. Uh, we, you know, Holly's been uh, asking us for some more pickleball space and that this is really due to customer demand and residents asking for it. So we took the single tennis court in Horizon Shores Park um, that was not widely used, but uh, what really pushed this project over the edge was that Horizon Middle School built, uh, I don't know, 12 or a dozen tennis courts at the middle school. So really they're meeting the need for the community right there. And so we converted these to three pickleball courts. The only thing we're waiting on are some fencing to go in between those three courts. And then the pickleball organization uh, in Moorhead donated um, windscreen material that we're gonna be installing. And that uh, that's about a $5,000 donation. So pretty cool. And I don't know how to play pickleball, but it looks pretty fun. So maybe I'll take that up. And then 2019, we're about 29% ex expended, but we have all of it earmarked for various things. Um, I'm not gonna speak to any of these. So again, if anybody, as you're reviewing your notes or uh, have any questions, please let me know on some of these items. And the ones that are still in our program, um, they're not in concrete. So if, if you have ideas or you may want to use this money for some other things, we, we can certainly would love to have your input. 2020, about 20% expended and 76% program. So we have a little bit of funding to play with uh, for new ideas uh, or customer requests that come in. Uh, so that's where we're at with the park amenities budget. Some other items as well. And then, um, just real quick, and I'll close with my comments that uh, we were developing a long range plan for, for sustainment and improving our existing parks. And part of that was uh, based on a, a, a inventory and inspection that we did, condition assessment that we did last October. And we took all that information, IT developed a uh, parks assessment system where we input all the data, and we came up with 101 maintenance items totaling about $150,000, and then about 70 capital improvement level requirements uh, worth about 2.3 million. Um, so we're in the process of prioritizing those CI requirements, but we have started working those maintenance items. And th these aren't all inclusive because we always get requirements that come up through the years, what, to, through the year, whether it's repairs that we don't know about, damage, and things that are, my guys uh, find. Uh, but of those 101 items we identified in the, in the assessment, we've done 21 of those and that's on a list here. And I wanted to highlight a couple of those. And it's really the innovation and initiative of my parks maintenance staff that some of these were done. Uh, this one, very small project, but huge. It just, it's just a cool project. They, uh, we were gonna replace the benches, but they decided to see if they could plane that wood because it is, um, man, Mike's gonna, I can't remember what kind of wood it is, but I don't think you can get it anymore. So they planed it. And that's the, that's the same wood that was on there before, but it looks like a brand new bench. Um, those are all done for like 300 bucks. And then we've replaced the wood on, the, on some other benches in Gooseberry. And that was a very low cost item. Rather than replacing all of the bench, just replace some wood and they look brand new. And then um, we had some mats and field. Uh, we had some folks ask if we could make some improvements to the concession stands in the bathroom at mats and field. And so my guys took the initiative, uh, retrofitted and put in new LED lights for some energy savings and then paid into the bathrooms and uh, did some other work to improve the aesthetics of that, uh, our, our premier baseball field in Moorhead. And forestry added again, started and they planted some trees in the Stone Mill Estates Park there down off of 48th Street and 44th Avenue. So 
um, several trees that, and that's again, another large park, but wide open with no trees. So we're gonna start uh, developing those trees in those neighborhood parks. And then my street department in between street repairs this summer fixed the driveway at Lamb Park. So uh, you can see the pictures, it was severely degraded and um, there it is last week. So uh, we did that with, with uh, in-house uh, for relatively inexpensive uh, compared with the contractor. So I think that's all I got for that. It's a lot of information, but Mike's been busy this summer getting a lot of things done. And I just wanted to highlight that to you guys um, to show all the great work that we've been doing this year. So with that, I'll open up any questions. This is Oh, sorry. This, this is Holly. I just wanted to mention um, that the assessment project that he talked about is awesome because it lets us look at our all of our older uh, neighborhoods. But we did run into problems with the windscreens at the pickleball court and found out after the neighbors, we were just about ready to place the order and one of the park maintenance people said, we have tried that in the past with some of this fencing and you got to make sure that it is able to hold the wind with the with the screens on them and we found out that that fence is not built sturdy enough to hold the windscreen so we did have to send the donation back from those pickleballers and we'll eventually look as we upgrade that fencing we'll be able to do that um, I'll let it open for questions but Steve could you mention also kind of um, the 2021 five-year CIP and what we're moving to on that also and I'll get off the line here you mean what we have put programmed into the 2021 CI? Um, no, just the fact sure. that we're going under a new system where we're not just looking kind of one year out at a time. That, oh, yep. roger that. Okay, yep, thanks. Um, yeah, what Holly wanted me to speak of is that um, for the first time uh, in, in history or in recent history, we have now have a comprehensive five-year capital improvement program for the city of Moorhead that uh, has been put together by the staff and, and city council. Uh, so what, the way we used to budget, we used to budget one year and then a couple of years out, taking a look at some things. Now it's a five year plan. So we, we know, and this is across the board from vehicles, equipment to uh, facility projects. Uh, it's, it's a huge accomplishment uh, in our finance director, Carla, she came from another city and brought this skill set to build that five year SIP. So it's really good because now we can really target where we want to spend our scarce capital dollars across the board for what's best for the city. So it's pretty exciting. Awesome. Uh, thank you, Steve. Does anyone else have any uh, questions or comments? I hope you do see uh, uh, in the chat there that there are a lot of good comments there. Can I just ask so, a question to, uh, you could put me in my place if uh, this isn't the right place to bring it up, but I asked about Blue Stem because I kind of live out near there and um, I don't know where I might take this question or concern, but there is a, a walking and a bike trail down that Blue Stem road. And of course, when they do have performances or activities going on out there, uh, there's a lot of traffic. Even now, there's a lot of traffic, people going for walks. But there's no lighting on that section of that road. And so tell me where to take that if that doesn't belong here. Because I, I do think a lot of people have expressed uh, concern about that to me. Um, thank you, Valerie. That's a great question. What we could. Um, what I'll do is I'm a member, uh, along with engineering, uh, Moorhead Public Service, uh, Police Department, and Planning. Uh, I'm a member of the Streetlight Committee. And so we, I will make a note of that and then see if there are, and I'll talk to Bob Zimmerman, the city engineer, and see what the plans were for that road and that bike path, um, whether we're waiting for development uh, into the, where that field is or more development. Uh, but I'll I'll ask the question of uh, what that long range plan is for lighting along that uh, multi use path. Thank you. Thank you. 
Anyone else? All right. With that, uh, Steve, would you mind muting? It's more just uh, your speakers must be really powerful because it picks back up <laughs> in there. But uh, okay, uh, moving on to item nine, we have information and update. Uh, Holly, I assume you're running with this. Mostly this is available for you in case you would have any questions, but I thought um, we would like each of you to participate in the dog park grand opening also. We're, we're gonna try and get a socially distance uh, picture out there if you'd like to come, mandatory attendance. It's not mandatory, just if you'd like to come out and join us um, out and see the new dog park. Um, the arts and cultural project updates, I think is really a fun thing going on. The arts and culture commission are not part of the park board, but I think we work very closely together using a lot of the park land and different things. But this particular item talks about um, where public art will be posted around the city in the next, um, the next few months. And then even along that river corridor, it talks about it. But the panels for the message centers are listed also as one of the next items and that homestead park these are the text for uh, those message centers are included we installed one today down at Viking Chip Park and we're retrofitting but we worked with Clay County Historical Society for um, historical information for these um, panels so those are listed in your packet and you're right it is 106 pages it's very long um, but the canoe and kayak program as it says in the memo um, that particular program has been going on for five years this will be our sixth finishing up and the underwriters for the insurance company because it is a high risk I, um, activity especially now with the river remaining high all year uh, it flows pretty good so um, the insurance underwriters came and looked at our policies procedures our waivers our manuals um, and river keepers is an essential partner in that in that they are the experts while being on the river and they also hold the inventory. They used to do it themselves, but um, most we own two uh, kayaks. The rest of the equipment for that project is theirs. So essential partners that way. And then it's just um, right now we per, the farmers market's going on, but there's a haunted mall special event listed. That is going to be a different kind of a, a event, I believe, as we get closer. It's going to be basically open up your trunks and kind of come trick or treating. I think it's um, trunk or, or treat. I think it, trunk and treat is, I think, what we're going to change this name to. Um, but all of these events, we were hoping the virus lets up and we can have them, um, but we do have plans to alter the activity um, should that not be possible. So just that's an FYI updates on some of the things going on in that art also is the water tower art project. Um, you know, I'm seeing one painted in North Fargo in the industrial park that's being painted white and red. And I think they all miss opportunities to not include art when, when they do that. But um, Morehead is progressive that way. And we're gonna have another water tower um, painted with um, various art that is selected by the community. So again, if there's any questions, that would be happy to address them. I just definitely like to encourage uh, anyone who's available to come to that dog park grand opening. That should be uh, a fun event and, and uh, I'm definitely looking forward to that. Any other uh, comments, questions before we adjourn? Could you state the date and time of that again? I think it's in the materials, but um, if you don't mind. Yeah, it is September 14th, right, Holly, at uh, 4 o'clock? Is it 13th? Yes, it, it, it's the 14th. It's the Monday okay. night. And um, we're gathering at 4 o'clock because we don't want everybody to get there at once. But um, the ribbon cutting is scheduled for 4.30 so that some council members can get back to the meeting at uh, 5.30. Thank you. Anyone else?
All right. Well, before we adjourn, I'd like to say this virtual meeting actually was <laughs> went not too uh, not too bad. So thank you, Scott, for getting this set up and and getting us uh, ready to go. And and uh, thank you everyone for for being here today. Uh, we'll look forward to our next meeting. And uh, with that, I would uh, we are adjourned. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, yeah. Steve. Thank Steve. That's good. I was just going to say, Steve, you might want to read the comments. A lot of good comments. Randy had mentioned that. I did. I'm cutting and pasting them into my next job in my performance review. So thank you very much. Uh, this, no, but uh, seriously, thank you for the nice comments. I'll pass it on to my folks. Thank you all. Excellent work. Thank you, everybody. Have a good evening. You too. Thank you.